Hello, welcome to Lost World Minute, the Bit of Bombing podcast reviewing the 1997 sequel to Jurassic Park, one minute time. I'm Brad. I'm Dave. And today we're here to discuss Minute 36 of the Lost World. And I'm still trying to fight this flu. <laughs> <laughs> I do apologise. Yeah, yeah, I do apologise. We've uh, pushed this recording as late as we possibly can, just so I can get it done so we don't miss a week, but uh, I'm croaky. I apologise for that. But we're uh, we're here to talk about Minute 36 today. Not much happening in the uh, world of Jurassic World at the moment, or Fallen Kingdom, I should say. They're, uh, they've finished filming. Sets are sadly being deconstructed over at Hawaii, and uh, I think that's about all we're going to... No, for now until we uh, possibly trailer in November, so or teaser. Um, yeah, which is unfortunate because now we're going to the dry season for news. Yep, yep. But uh, the speculation can continue, or well, we uh, can just look at the past films and uh, dig a bit deeper into them. Bert, come here. You recognise this trackway? Yes, I do. Tyrannosaur. We'll get uh, straight into minute 36. Mm-hmm. All right. As we enter the 35th minute of Lost World, the hunters had broken off a baby Pachycephalosaurus from the herd and was attempting to capture it. Robert Burke and an offsider had arrived on the scene and he had begun describing how the creature's neck attached to the bottom of its head, unlike other reptiles. At 35 minutes and 4 seconds... Using his hand as a guide, Robert Burke describes how when the head of the Pachycephalosaurus comes down, it lines up with the backbone, making it perfect for absorbing impacts. At 35 minutes and 9 seconds, the Pachycephalosaurus breaks away from its captivity and rams the jeep park, sending the occupant flying through and out the passenger door. The small creature then sets its eyes on Burke and charges. At 35 minutes and 15 seconds, the command jeep pulls to a stop. Roland out of the radio lets the snagger know that Fry tucks loose and on the move and about to cross their path. At 35 minutes and 22 seconds, we're introduced to a large Humvee, two retractable seats on arms mounted either side, carrying hunters with snare poles. As the large vehicle roars on the screen, the two chairs extend outwards. The hunters extend their poles, ready for a capture. At 35 minutes and 29 seconds, one of the hunters gets his snare around the Pachycephalosaurus neck. At 35 minutes and 35 seconds, a hunter on the back of the Hummer fires a tranquilizer dart at the small animal, sealing its fate. At 35 minutes and 42 seconds, the Hummer pulls to a stop. A winch line begins to reel in the small animal as hunters dismount from other vehicles and circle it. At 35 minutes and 48 seconds, two more hunters get stair lines around the animal, holding it in place. At 35 minutes and 52 seconds, a massive pair of arms mounted to the front of Hummer begin to lower around the side of the creature. At 35 minutes and 57 seconds, airbags on the arms expand, securing the creature in place. It roars out in protest, but can't do anything. It has been captured. And this ends the 36th minute of The Lost World. Alright, so following on from minute 35, we had Burke uh, raise his hand, start to lower, or bring his fist in line with his wrist, um, and saying the pack his neck attaches at the back of the head, or doesn't attach at the back of the head like other reptiles, uh, so when it lowers its head, it lines up with its backbone. Um, and uh, while this is happening, we get uh, the packy running around between the hunters, beside the hardtop jeep. Um, is that Carter standing at the door? Yeah, it is. It's yeah. Carter. I was going to say, it's a curly... Yeah, it's a curly <laughs> curly head man standing behind the door of the um, the Jeep, sort of watching. And um, as as uh, Burke says, it uh, lines up perfectly with its backbone for, in a, for absorbing impacts. It uh, headbutts the door of the Jeep and sends Carter flying through and out mm-hmm. the opposite door, which was all a practical effect, which still looks yep. good today. Yeah, it does. Yeah, Carter gets his ad, uh, gets thrown through the side of the jeep, and then he finds his way. Um, he must find his way. He hops back into Dieter's uh, the outrigger jeep, and then because he's driving the outrigger jeep later. There must be more than one, or it's just um, because of the way they filmed it. But when we're in the previous minute, when um, Ludlow claps his hand and smiles at uh, the after the motorcycle goes between the. 
the sauropod's leg legs. The um, there's actually a snagger on the opposite side of them, um, sort of driving along beside the command jeep, but it's not mm-hmm. uh, it's not Dieter or um, Carter driving it or in it. So there might be more than one snagger jeep, or it was just a uh, stunt driver for the scene before. Possibly. Um, mm. But uh, it, it was a nice little sort of, sort of little jump scare because um, you're not expecting it to happen. Mm-hmm. But uh, you get Burke and the man beside him turn and run for their jeep as the Packy sort of looks at him and charges. But then it, it must run off off screen because Roland's command jeep pulls to a stop, and over the radio he uh, tells the snag that Fry Tuck's on the move and just about to cross their path, and then he waves the driver on to uh, to keep driving. Um, yeah. you get Ludlow slow stand in the back of the jeep and look, look, uh, what you assume is look towards the damaged jeep, but it's actually back towards the direction Burke runs. So I don't know if that's just, they lost the sort of where they were geographically, um, as to why Lud- Ludlow slowly stands and looks dumbfounded or shocked at something. Cause yeah, it's just a weird one there when that happens. Um, because using that, that redwood tree stump again as a sort of landmark to follow. Um, oh, there's multiple in this in this game show, although oh, okay. there's, uh, there's at least ten different ones that we see. Okay. Um, and then uh, here comes the, or what's called the snagger. Um, I would say the two guys on the seats of the snaggers and not the actual Hummer itself, but uh, a mod- heavily modified Hummer here. It's got two... Uh, extendable arms on either side of it with seats um five point racing harnesses in it to uh keep the uh keep the guys in the seats where they're supposed to be um it's a little bit impractical it would require the animal to run in a straight line slowly so you can drive up behind it (laughs) um and this is where um it looks like it's driving on a bit of a formed road um there is grass on it but you can sort of see formed sort of yeah you can see this. You can see this road in the in the um, location pictures that I have. So yeah, yeah, definitely a formed road there. We get the uh, the arms come out in a position. Um, there's a couple of hunters in the cage on the rear of it, which again the framework on the back of these vehicles is more for uh, hunter safety and keeping them in the back of the vehicles and not for containing animals. And we get the view from above. It's while they're chasing the uh, the packy. It's interesting. It's a train, a train, a train drive or chain driven system for the extension, which means you haven't got air pneumatic rods or anything like that to fail on island. It's a very mm-hmm. simple, simple way of having uh, the arms come out and the seats stay pointed forward as they come out. But then we cut to one of the hunters in the back with a massive tranquilizer gun. <laughs> yep. Like this this thing's massive. Uh, assume it's the same one we see Sarah with later at the, or at the end on the dock, I think. It looks similar. It's probably the same prop, but not meant to be the same exact gun. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's sort of interesting or weird how this is cut because um, it sort of recoils a bit. I don't know if they just hit a bump in the road or it, it seems like he just fired one dart and was going to fire again. Um but raises the, raises the rifle to his shoulder again and uh, presumably fires a dart at the packy. And then there's a weird cut. As soon as he fires, um, there's a winch on top of the hammer that sort of springs taut. Um, mm-hmm. It sort of makes it makes it seem like he just fired a harpoon at it. I um, think that... I always got the impression that he did. Yeah, but in, that, in fact, when you see the... Uh, the from above shot looking down at the packy as they're chasing it, the uh, mm-hmm. the guy in the right hand seat actually gets a snare over the top of it, over the top of its head. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that cable pulling tight would be the the Hummer coming or slowing down and the packy running ahead, and the uh, the cable coming taut because I think the the two snare poles on either side are hooked up to that winch. So uh, once they snare it, they don't have, they don't get pulled out of the chair, and if it's the way of the vehicle that pulls the animal to a stop, because as you, as you get the camera follow around the front, you can clearly see the cable from the neck of the animal going up over the arms and to the uh, to the cage of the Hummer. Yeah. Um, 
but it's also a good little thing here too as we come around the front and the the pack is sort of brought to a stop um that that hunter on the driver's side of the vehicle uh gets off and hands his pole to a motorbike and the motorbike rider hands him another fresh freshly snared snare pole still got the cable on it um mm -hmm. and this way they get uh they get two hunters out the front and put another two lassoes over its neck so the pack is held by three lines to keep it in the one spot the big arms come down which the use the whole use of this is not fully i don't fully get like the arms come down you get padded bags that come out to sort of sort of i'd, I'd guess protect the animal from thrashing around um mm -hmm. but it's only a matter of time before it sort of passes out from the tranquilizer and falls to the ground and these bags don't look like something that could actually hold the animal in the air well, i think the idea of it was to just contain it until they could kind of get the ropes around it and just then shepherd it into a cage which yeah. again brings up the question where's the cage <laughs> <laughs> but that's when the uh, the bags inflate this is where uh, minute 36 ends but um mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it does raise some questions, but um, it's sort of here we're seeing nice and uh, nice and being careful, looking after the merchandise, if you will, um, mm -hmm. because uh, it's not going to be in anyone's interest to take animals back to the mainland injured, um, yeah. whether it's just cuts and scrapes or whatever else or broken limbs, because I don't think if, if they break any limbs, I don't think the animal's going back, it's just going to be released to die later on. Um, we'll see that later on with the infant Rex, but um, yeah, not 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 a lot to talk about in this minute apart from uh, some of the vehicles. I do love whenever you do get shots of the like the command jeep. Um, yeah, there's always there, it's always in a convoy. There's always the same vehicles driving around it, um, like they've just lined everyone up and driven from one end of the field to the other, turn around, let's go back, and just done it a couple of times. So the uh, actors can get their lines out, or they can take the shots they need. Um, yeah. It's sort of always uh, it makes it look like there's more vehicles there than probably what there actually is. Reusing them, sort of following, leading, uh, and all that stuff. Now, I did uh, I did post up some photos during the week of uh, some of these vehicles that are on the Universal Studios backlot tour. Um, mm -hmm. I think those that anyone that's done the tour, those that have seen photos, the uh, there's also a mock-up RV there as well, um, and a couple of Unimogs, and a very uh, distressed-looking Snagger Hummer. It's uh, yeah, pretty well the rusted Snagger up. Yeah, Snagger is the original because it's been there since the um, first, since the original RV was there, and since the original uh, Worker Village was there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, but some, yeah, some of the vehicles, like there's uh, the command jeeps there, but it's been freshly painted, and there's some slight differences. Um, most most of the stuff there is just a, a rolling chassis that's been sort of mocked up on the outside to look like the uh, what was on screen, because um, those those trails that are there aren't aren't the real trails at all. Um, no, those those are my cups. Yep. But um, and we can talk more about this when we get to the worker village, but the bones that are in that there that are there are original because you can spot those same exact bones in the episode of Sliders when they're crawling into the village. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and we will get to uh we'll get to that when we get to the village. There's a lot to talk about there. Yeah. Um but still I wouldn't I wouldn't uh I'd have I'd have a mock up one of those cars in my backyard any day. Not knowing it's the real screen use thing, yeah. Uh, but it just sort of le it leads to the whole uh, Universal like to have stuff there on display, but don't like to look after it. Um, yeah, anyone's it's unfortunate. Yeah, anyone's been following sort of the the rebuilding of the uh, Hero Car from Back to the Future, so sort of know what they what they like, they what the storing practices are like. Just sort of throw it in a throw it in a container or a shed and don't look after it at all. But um, but anyway, that's sort of one of those things. Oh, I, I suppose the big one too is the uh, operations building slash embryonics administration set that was oh, still yeah. standing. 
at yeah, the back. Yeah, they're in terrible condition. Which uh, is sad, because you got... The peeling away to reveal the uh, plywood underneath, which, of course, just rots, is rotting away. The entire thing has fallen in, except for the, um, that metal structure and the helipad. And the helipad, of course, was built to code because they had to land a helicopter on it. So yeah. that's about the only thing that that's, like, really real about that set. Yeah, and unfortunately, it'll be the last thing standing from it as yeah, well. Yeah. That and the uh, that and the concrete foundations over the pool, or over the swamp mm -hmm. it's on. Um, Which begs the question: what they're going to do with it once they uh, once it does just fall apart completely, and they want to reuse that set? Because right now, the War of the World set is just kind of crumbling in front of it. Another thing that Universal is letting go: the War of the Worlds from Spielberg's 2005 movie. Yeah, they've got the uh, the massive jumbo jet, the, the jet liner yeah. in pieces there, which has sort of blocked off the set. Um, yeah. You do you do any YouTube set set tours and that you sort of got to go through parts of the plane to uh, see see the uh, the Embryonics Administration Building or what's left of structure from uh, the actual mm -hmm. tour itself. Um, so I suppose it's in a sort of little area where they don't really need uh, it's not really used space. Um, no, but it could be, and so that just begs the question. The airplane stuff, and the, they can throw probably throw a lot of that plaster and wood stuff away, but the metal pieces will probably stay, or probably be scrapped, I mean. And But it begs the question, because half the administration building is built over a moat. So you got to wonder, what are they, they going to fill in the moat? Because they have a, or at least they had a filtration system, they used to run a fountain through the moat there to kind of aerate it a bit. Yeah, so the but water didn't go down, stagnant. I don't know if they used to do that anymore. Yeah. Well, the other thing, too, is you look at... Um, and <laughs> we've we've left minute 36 all behind now. Um, <laughs> the um, the early concept art for the operations building had it on, on either a lake or on water. Um, yeah. Was that actually built... Like, is it a concrete, a actual concrete, um, small lake, moat, what have you? Yeah, it's, it's... Um, that's then had the foundations built on it as well, because I don't... If that was yeah. a low-lying area that just collected water, I don't know how they'd go and just build a set on top of it for one. No, and... they, they, dug, they dug that out. You can see pictures in the making of where they okay. just dug the, that pit out and then just filled it with water and a filtration system. Yeah, there's a there's a pump kind of hidden behind some rocks that fake uh, set rocks that they had built that I think they may have torn down. I well, left the pumping equipment there when they built the administration building over the work village set. Well, there's actually on that um, for the Jurassic Park free stuff. There's a like a circle circle fount fountain like structure in the middle of the or at the end of the staircase where the worker village would have been. Um, that's, if I, I think rightly. that's where the um, sign used to be, the engine sign. Oh, okay. They had potted plants around it to make it look like it was overgrown. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah. But again, we'll we'll look a lot deeper into all this when we get to the, uh, the worker okay. village stuff. But until then, David, anything else you want to bring up for 36? No, I think we're good. All right. All right, guys, let's get the hell out of here. Contact details are on the website, thelostworldminute.com. You can email feedback to thelostworldminute at gmail.com. Facebook, The Lost World Minute. Twitter, at The Lost World Minute. And Instagram, The Lost World Minute. Easy to remember. Yeah, yeah, very easy to remember. Right. <laughs> uh, David, thank you for joining me for this recording. Welcome. And uh, we'll be back. I've been Brad. I'm Dave. And uh, we'll talk to you all later. Goodbye. Talk to you later. Bye. It is absolutely imperative that we work with the Costa Rican Department of Biological Preserves to establish a set of rules for the preservation and isolation of that island. These creatures require our absence to survive, not our help. And if we could only step aside and trust in nature, Life 